Hi, everyone, and welcome to the webinar. We're so glad to have you here to talk more about how to get ready for Pulmonary Fibrosis Awareness Month in September. It's just a couple of weeks away. I'm Kate Gates. I am the Senior Director of Programs here at the Foundation. I want to start with a couple of housekeeping points. If you have questions about anything we're talking about or anything regarding Pulmonary Fibrosis Awareness Month, please go ahead and click on the questions button in the go to webinar control panel that'll bring down a little box where you can put in your questions um, if you're on mobile i think it looks more like a question mark so you can click on the question mark also in that control panel you can see that there are a, there's a handout section we have five handouts there that we're going to reference throughout the call so you can um download those there's the planning guide different things that'll be referenced so just go back to that handouts uh handouts button at some point during the call if you want to download any of those things um if you if you want to learn more, if you have other questions, you can visit us at pulmonaryfibrosis.org. The resources we've referenced today, many of the things that we're talking about are available there. And we are recording this webinar, so it'll be available afterwards. Uh, I'd like to in introduce our great presenters today. We have Samantha Simmons. She's the manager of marketing and communications for the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. She'll be talking a little bit later about how you can raise awareness for pulmonary fibrosis. Jackie Williams is our Director of Development and Special Events. She will be talking about how you can engage with fundraising, either through the walk or through the appeal or through another event. And I'm very excited that we have joining us today, Debbie Herndon. She was a caregiver for someone with pulmonary fibrosis, and she's also a PFF volunteer. To get us started today, though, I want to um, ask you all to do a poll. I'm going to put it up. It should show up on your screen, and you can choose an answer just to see how ready everyone is for Pulmonary Fibrosis Awareness Month. Do you all already have all your plans set, or are you um, still thinking about uh, what you might do this year? So I am going to launch this poll. Um, So now you should see the poll, and I'm going to give everyone just a second to, to answer there. Okay, let's see. It looks like we have most of our answers in. So now I can share the results, and you all can see. Oh. Um, <laughs> So it looks like we're, we're pretty evenly split. Some of us are, are pretty ready to go with our ideas. I know I've already seen some people and um, some starting some things for the month. Some have some ideas but aren't quite there and others will find this presentation today hopefully really helpful to get all their ideas, uh, all their ideas ready for pulmonary fibrosis awareness. Um, Last year in 2019, Pulmonary Fibrosis Awareness Month was bigger than ever. You can see from these impressive stats that we really had a lot of engagement. We raised a lot of awareness around the country and around the world. We had over 1.2 million impressions on Facebook. So that means over 1.2 million times people were looking at information about pulmonary fibrosis, about our stories, our facts, so that they were learning more. And we had over 500,000 um, impressions on of portraits of PF. So that's a project that Sam is going to talk about a little bit later. It's where you get to share your story, talk about living with pulmonary fibrosis or caring for someone with pulmonary fibrosis. So that's just a lot of people who learn more what it's like to experience pulmonary fibrosis. Um, I just do want to acknowledge that this year is going to be different. It has to be different because of uh, the pandemic that we're living through. So we're not going to be able to see each other in person or to go to these events that we would normally go to. But it's more important than ever that we find these virtual ways to connect, to um, to meet with each other virtually, to raise awareness on social media or through the virtual walks. So I want to thank you all again for being willing to try something new this year. 
So I, I'm going to turn it over to Debbie Herndon. I, Debbie is a great volunteer. She's a PFF ambassador and a support group leader. She lost her husband um, in 2015 to pulmonary fibrosis. Uh, she is based in Boise, Idaho and has done all kinds of uh, events with us. She's worked on advocacy, all kinds of things. So Debbie, I'd like to just ask you to talk a little bit about your experience as a volunteer and with Pulmonary Fibrosis Awareness Month. Thank you, Kate. Um, first of all, I'd like to say I feel it's ironic that um, that when you're diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis, you kind of get a new normal in your lifetime. And now all of us are, are dealing with a new normal in our lifetimes. So um, that being said, research must go on. And so I feel it's even more important now to raise funds for the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation than ever. Um, what I've done in the past, what we have done, I should say, I have a, a, a pulmonary fibrosis support group, and about four years ago, we put together um, a, a walk for pulmonary fibrosis, and we called it Breath of Palooza, and no one will no one will own up to who came up with the name, but because we can't think of who came up with the name, but we, it kind of stuck with us. So we do a Breath of Palooza, a walk for pulmonary fibrosis every year in one of our main parks in town. And um, that has turned out to be quite, um, quite successful for us. Um, the first year we had one major donor from um, a private donor, and that really helped us to more than exceed our goals. And each year we've we've exceeded our goals and it's been somewhat very fulfilling monetary wise fundraising wise but it's even been more so for awareness um, we along the route walk the walk route we had signs posted that gave different um, facts about pulmonary fibrosis and more people came back saying wow i didn't know anything about this disease and so every time that I hear one person say that, I feel that you know our efforts are, are not in vain. Um, another thing we did a couple of years ago was we did an online auction and one of our members donated two beautiful quilts and we did an online auction and raised funds that way for, for the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation. And I've also found it helpful to do um, a letter to the editor. You know, you never think people read those things until you write one, and then you find out there are a lot of people out there because they often comment to you when they see you. You know, oh, I saw your letter to the editor. And again, I just think it's so important that we get the awareness piece out there and any way we can do it. And so writing a letter is always good. Now, getting a spot on television or on the radio is also a good thing. Um, my daughter worked in, in um, television here in the city, and um, I thought it would be just easier than heck to get on to the television, but it's really not that easy. But persistence has paid off, and this year we will be doing a live interview shot with, um, with our, one of our main guys that always talks about community activities. We've also posted our walk on, on all of the community boards online. I'm fortunate to have a wonderful, um, um, marketing person in my group who happens to also be my daughter and so she takes care of a lot of that thing that stuff for me so um, this year we're going to try to get some um, buildings in Boise to blue up that's not always um, easy but I've seen a lot of cities that do it they do their bridges they do their buildings and so we're going to just definitely make that attempt and another thing that we did was we um, um, had some hats made that say just breathe and what a better way to to bring awareness to a disease than to wear the hat and have someone say well what what is that all about what's the just breathe about so that's about all I have to share is there anything else you'd like to me to add Kate no that's great it sounds like you're you're doing a lot uh, I love the hat that's really super cute so great thank you so much Debbie um let's see so sam do you want to go ahead and talk more about uh, some of the ways that we can raise awareness debbie talked about some of them but some of the other ideas that there are out there yes absolutely okay so there's a number of ways let's go ahead and get started with our 30 facts in 30 days series 
Uh, from September 1st to September 30th, we're going to share a fact every single day on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at 11 a.m. Central Time. The facts range from everything from general disease information to treatment options. We're doing COVID-19 facts this year, clinical trials, palliative care, so much. We really do try to emphasize our facts about everything that the pulmonary fibrosis community needs to know about living well with pulmonary fibrosis. Um, and you can help by liking, sharing, and commenting. So whenever you engage, and by engage we mean like, share, and comment, whenever you engage, it helps us to kind of extend our reach beyond the PF community and really reach people who don't know about pulmonary fibrosis. So you can like and share and then leave comments. So you can leave comments such as things like, oh, this is really good to know, or, or, or I didn't know this, or you can ask questions. If you do need clarification about some of the, the facts that we share, feel free to ask questions and we can answer them for you right on Facebook. So the more engagement that we do get on these facts, the more people will see it, the more awareness we can spread. So every time you see this fact right here, this green and blue blend, that's a part of our 30 facts in 30 days series. So give it a like, share, and a comment. Next slide. EFF. Quick facts. So this right here is pretty much pulmonary fibrosis 101. This is just a single sheet of paper that talks about, you know, what pulmonary fibrosis is, how many people are affected, the causes, the treatment options, the symptoms, pretty much everything that you need to know about pulmonary fibrosis, but in a nutshell. We do all know that pulmonary fibrosis is a very complicated disease, but this really simplifies it down to the basics. You can use this at events. You can download it as a PDF and email it to your friends, family, or connection. You can download this as a, a JPEG file, which is an image file, and you can post it on social media. Um, so this fact sheet right here really is kind of an all-encompassing information sheet. It works with a lot of different situations and environments, and you can download this directly at pulmonaryfibrosis.org. Next slide. These right here are our friends and family cards. So these are just small little cards, maybe about yay big or so, kind of like a little postcard size. And they come in bundles of five. So what you do is you have these bundles of five and they're all identical and you just take them and you just pass them out to people. And these were really created to help people better explain pulmonary fibrosis to their friends and family. They all include some of the most frequently asked questions about pulmonary fibrosis such as, you know, what causes it? Can it run in the family? What are the treatment options? How can I help? Just things that people are most likely to ask them when you tell them about pulmonary fibrosis for the first time. Um, because they are very tiny cards, you can order them for the PCC. You can call us at 844-TALK-PFF. Or in this webinar, we included a handout where we have a full-size friends and family card that you can print out, and then you just fold it in half. And then the same thing, the next time you are someplace, when things go back to normal and you can actually see friends and family again, you can just start handing them out to people. And it's really great to kind of get people the very basics about pulmonary fibrosis and help them really understand the disease and what pulmonary fibrosis really is. Next slide. Portraits of pulmonary fibrosis. Telling your story is one of the best ways to raise awareness. Every single story that we have in this series was submitted by a real person who is living with the disease or has been affected by the, the disease in some way. So people submit their story via a form on our website or they submit it to us directly on social media. And people really tell their stories in their own words and how they experience all pulmonary fibrosis. Um, people also submit their own photos. You see here, people, we have on a slide here, all these different photos that people have submitted to go along with their stories. And this has really always been the most impactful way to raise awareness. Like the 30 Facts in 30 Days series, we share this every single day on social media during September. We share these at 1 p.m. Central. So we want you to engage. So again, like, share, and comment to help these stories really extend beyond the PF community and into the general public so that people can learn about pulmonary fibrosis through hearing real stories. So leaving comments on this one especially is really important because it really just helps to foster those connections. 
it lets people know that they're not alone, that you heard them, that you read their story, that you know how they feel, that you can relate to them. And it really does help people feel less alone. We know that pulmonary fibrosis can be a very lonely disease. So connecting to people by reading their stories and sending comments is a really great way to really make an impact on people who share their stories. So if you have a story to share, you are welcome to share it as well. We accept stories from everybody who has been impacted by pulmonary fibrosis. So that includes patients and caregivers and lung transplant recipients, those who have lost a loved one, and even healthcare professionals. We love sharing stories not only in September, but all year round. So we share them daily in September, but we also share them in October and January and February, April and March. All year round, you are welcome to share a story. So for PFAM for September, we want you to definitely engage. So like, share, and comment. And if you wish, share your own story too. And you can get started at pulmonaryfibrosis.org slash PFAM, where you'll find our form to, start, to share your story. Next slide. Okay, blew up for PF. This one is really fun. This is where you can get creative. So for this one, we want you to wear as much blue as possible, take a selfie, and then post your selfie on social media and tell the world why you support PFAM and why you're going blue and why, pul or, why or how pulmonary fibrosis has affected you. And you wanna use the hashtag right here that you see, blue up for PF. Use that in all of your posts. Um, on the side here, you'll see a couple of examples of some of our PF heroes who have gone blue. People have dyed their hair, they've painted their nails, they've worn blue t-shirts. They have just gotten really creative and just gone blue. We've got the selfie signs here in the corner. So there are endless ways that you can blue up for PF and really show the world how you wanna get creative to raise awareness. And another method, you'll notice there are some buildings here, is that you can actually ask a building or a landmark in your community to shine blue for pulmonary fibrosis. Um, so if there's a building or a fountain or a clock tower, or we've even had Niagara Falls go blue and green before for Pulmonary Fibrosis Awareness Month. So if there's any kind of landmark in your community that can shine blue, reach out to the management and ask them if they'll go blue someday in September. Uh, many times it's free of charge. And on our website at pulmonaryfibrosis.org slash PFAM, we do have a letter of request. So it's a Word document template. You just download it, fill in all the blanks, and then you can go ahead and send that off to the management and ask a building to go blue. This one's really great because we have had buildings and landmarks go blue from San Francisco to New York to Texas to everywhere in between. And it really goes to show that the PF community is nationwide and all over the US and North America, we can shine blue and help raise awareness of this disease. Next slide. Okay, now last but certainly not least, this is our profile pictures for social media. So you can update your Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram profile picture with these unique different profile pictures here, all of which have a different nod to the PF heroes that we are celebrating this year. So for these square images, these are great for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, even LinkedIn if you want to. And we have these longer, more rectangular cover photos. And these are really great for Twitter and Facebook. So on Facebook in particular, when you do change your profile photo, it'll show up in the newsfeed. And then that's a really great way to get the conversation started with people. So people might ask you why you're changing your profile photo or what does this mean or what is pulmonary fibrosis? So it's a really great way to get that conversation started. So these all here are just some of the different ways that you can participate in PFAM. And you know, PFAM belongs to the entire PF community. So we love to see any and all creativity. So we cannot wait to see what you come up with. And these are just some of the ideas. So everybody is always welcome to blue up and submit their story, share the facts, and get really creative for September. Great, thanks so much, Sam. I, those sound like a lot of fun ideas and I can't wait to <laughs> see everyone's stories and see all the facts on social media throughout the month of September. Uh, great. 
So Jackie, do you want to go ahead and talk about fundraising and events? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kate. Um, and thank you all for joining us today. We're so excited to have you here learning more about PFAM. Um, so in addition to raising awareness, one of the most important things we can do during Awareness Month is to support the community. And a great way to do that is through fundraising, to raise funds to support the programs that the PFF provides to patients and caregivers, and also to support research. And as Debbie mentioned, now more than ever, we need support and we need to continue to move this research forward in this strange, unique year. Um, so I'm here to tell you a couple of different opportunities that we have put together for you to get involved in the fundraising efforts of the foundation, this PFAM. Next slide, please. So um, one of the best things that we do throughout PFAM is to honor and celebrate uh, people who have been affected by the disease. As Sam mentioned, we have our portraits of PF, and we are so honored this year to be sharing Tom Fry, one of our PFF ambassadors' stories. He is the voice of our PFAM appeal this year. So he'll be throughout the month of September on social media and through email sharing his story. And it, his story is especially um, touching at this time of year because he was actually a first responder during 9-11 and um, was diagnosed with pulmonary fibrosis due to his work at the World Trade Centers. So his story is very compelling and I encourage you throughout the month of September to watch on social media and email for his story and hear why supporting this community through fundraising is so important to him. Um, and there will also be opportunities to make a donation um, based on this appeal and to help us reach our $30,000 goal to support the community. So one of the, the great ways to get involved and Tom has been involved in our fundraising efforts in many different ways. He joined us at Broadway Belts for PFS this past year um, and helped us raise nearly $400,000. So we're excited to have him returning and drink PFAM and hearing his story throughout the month. Next slide, please. Wonderful. So many of you have heard about the PFF Walk program, one of our signature fundraising programs and one of the events I look forward to most each year. Um, and as Kate mentioned, you know, this year does look a little different. We have to keep everyone safe. We have to keep everyone healthy. So we have changed all of our walks to virtual walks this year. Um, and we're really excited about this still being a great opportunity to unite the community and come together and focus on being together while we're still apart. Um, and so we still think this is a really unique opportunity and a great way to raise funds and spread awareness throughout the month. So we will have a virtual walk opportunity for each of our walk locations, which you can see here on the screen, um, as well as a community opportunity to bring the walk program to your neighborhood, no matter where you are across the country. So one question that we often get asked is, what is a virtual walk, right? Um, so a virtual walk is really an online interactive opportunity for you to unite with people from this community across the country and have your own symbolic walk while raising funds and spreading awareness for the community. So I will tell you how exactly to get involved in the walk, um, and we hope that you're able to join us. Next slide, please. So the first thing you want to do is register for one of our walks at pffwalk.org. When you go to this site, you'll be able to create a team. You'll be able to register as an individual or join an existing team. Um, we have lots of great resources on pffwalk.org, including a video walking you through how to register and how to use the platform. Um, but once you're registered, you'll be on our list to receive all of our updates, all of our information about the walk. So it's really important to get registered first. Then the next slide, please. After you've registered, you'll get your own personal fundraising page. And on that, you'll want to set your fundraising goal. You'll want to share your story about why supporting this cause is so important to you. And then ask your friends and family to support. So again, on pffwalk.org, we have so many resources to help you do this. We have tools to help you set your goal. We have templated emails and social media posts 
to help you ask your friends and family for support and to craft your story to share why supporting this community is so important to you. So on pffwalk.org, there's a resource bank link. You can click on that to access all of these tools. And also one of the downloadable, um, the downloadable handouts from today's webinar is the PFF Walk Virtual Guide. And that, again, walks you through the entire process of how you start your campaign from beginning to end and gives you the tools and resources you need to have a successful campaign. So as you can see here, our goal is to raise $650,000 through this program. And we know we can do it with your help. Um, and with your support and again with all of those resources that we have to help make it easy for you and as a bonus another incentive to fundraise we have a lot of cool swag that you can earn from fundraising so this picture shows some of the swag that we're offering this year at a hundred dollars so if you raise a hundred dollars individually you can get our commemorative pff walk t-shirt which which features landmarks from all of our different walk sites. And they're so comfy, let me tell you. They are great t-shirts and I, I love collecting one from each year. So it's always a great one. Um, if you raise $250 individually, you will get a PFF Walk water bottle. Again, it's great, it keeps your beverage cold, it's wonderful. Um, and then all new this year, at $500, if you raise $500 individually, we have a PFF Walk baseball cap. So Debbie loves the cap idea. Um, we copied that. Um, at $500, we have a quarter zip dry fit, which is this really soft, nice material for working out or just um, leisurely wearing. And then at $2,500, $2, excuse me, raised individually, we have a packable all seasons jacket. So it's puffy, it's good for fall and winter, and it packs up, so it's great for travel when we can do that again, and just to wear all the time. So these are some really great PFF Walk swag that you can earn by fundraising. And again, pffwalk.org, we have the resources, you can reach these levels, no problem. Um, next slide, please. So after you've created your page, you've set your goal, you've told your story, and you've asked your friends and family for support, then you get to choose how you actually want to do your virtual walk. So as I mentioned, a virtual walk is kind of a symbolic walk. So of course you can still walk. Based on your comfort level, you can walk in your house, you can walk with friends and family in a socially distanced type of, you know, neighborhood situation or at a park, um, you can, you know, it's really up to you. On a treadmill, you can do whatever makes sense to you and you feel comfortable with. But aside from that, you don't have to stop at walking. If you want to dance, if you want to sing, if you want to go to a fitness class or one of these great virtual fitness classes, you can do anything as long as your goal is to support the community, to spread awareness and to show why we're doing this. That's all that matters. Um, we also have a great, as Sam mentioned, selfie sign. So we encourage you, fill out the selfie sign, tell us why you're walking, tell us why you're getting involved, take a photo, send it to us. We love to see how you're participating um, and even creating. So this is a great chance for you to get the whole family involved. You can make an art project, you can bake a blueberry muffin, right? Uh, to celebrate the blue up piece, Sam. Um, so really the possibilities are endless. And you know, the important part is to have that spirit that we're uniting for this cause, we're spreading awareness and we're raising funds. Next slide, please. So after you've completed your activity, we want to see what you did. This is really the most important part. We want to connect the community together. So we need to see your photos. We need to see your videos. These are some great examples of how the community has already started to participate in the virtual walk this year. So we have Lisa Hall with her daughter Reagan up in the top photo from Dallas, and they're coloring for their virtual walk. So they decided to use the PFF colors, do some beautiful artwork, and they're going to post them around their house on walk day. So fun, so creative, great to get the family involved. We have Robert Creighton on the top right up there, um, and he is one of our great Broadway Belts for PFF supporters, and he's dancing, as you can see, um, for his virtual walk. So, 
so I guess some great moves. We have Stephanie Golden and her family from Dallas um, on the bottom left, and they are using the selfie sign. So this is a great example of how they printed the sign, they wrote who they're walking for, and took a photo and sent it to us. So we love, again, to see why you're walking, why you're getting involved, and unite the community in that way. And then in the bottom right, we have Rosemary Price and her mom from Santa Fe, New Mexico, and they make these beautiful nylon flowers. So for their virtual walk, they made them in PSS colors, um, and that's how they are spreading their awareness and supporting the community. So as you can see, really the possibilities are endless, and as long as your goal is to support the community, and as long as you share with us so we can unite and bring everyone together, that's what matters most. So I, I know there's a lot of creativity out there, and we're so excited to see what everyone comes up with and does for their virtual walk this year. Next slide, please. So walk season has officially begun. Um, as many of you probably saw, we officially kicked off our walk season on Saturday. Um, with our virtual PFF walk kickoff event. This is a screenshot from it. It was so much fun. It was a live stream event on Facebook and YouTube. We had our colleague Amy Wardzala and our friends and Broadway Belts for PFF hostess Julie Halston hosts this event. It was such a great opportunity to connect with people across the country um, and to unite for this cause and really get everyone, I know I'm excited now, get everyone excited for walk season. So if you missed it, it's on our Facebook. It's, it was recorded. I encourage you to check it out. It gives you a lot of great ideas for how to get started with your own virtual walk. Um, and I promise you'll feel motivated and inspired and excited afterwards. It's so much fun. Um, and the good news is that we're actually doing something similar again. So on Saturday, September 26th, again on Facebook and YouTube, we'll be live streaming another event. And we're calling this the PFF Walk at Home Edition. So this is another chance to hear from leaders in the community, to connect with other walkers from across the country, and maybe even do an activity or two with us. Um, so more information will be coming about that event. We're really excited, again, to see everyone, to get everyone together. Um, so register at pffwalk.org to get on the list so you can get that information about that event, so you can be sure to join us. Um, and our contact information is here on this page as well. We're always here to help. If you have questions, you have a crazy idea you wanna talk through with us, um, or you don't know how to get started, we love to help, that's why we're here. Um, so we have a great team that is here to support. So that is all about the virtual walk, but the opportunities don't stop there. Um, another great way that you can participate in fundraising during PFAM is to create your own fundraiser. So this is part of our Team PFS program, which is our community events program. And this is where we have volunteers from across the country who create their own fundraising campaigns or events. And, you know, this year is, again, especially unique um, in that many events are unable to take place in person, but that has not stopped our volunteers and um, it doesn't have to stop us from supporting this community. So recently we had PFF ambassador Mal Doyle host a virtual concert supporting the pulmonary fibrosis community and it was so much fun. It was blue themed and it was a great chance to raise some funds and bring everyone together for this really great concert. And again, we have the resources you need to start your own virtual event, no matter what you decide to do. So on the screen here, we have some of the examples of some of the resources we have. We have a whole handout, again, attached as a handout to this webinar about how to host your own virtual event. And this can be really anything. So, you know, we have people doing virtual movie nights and we have, as you can see, a, an invitation pre-made. So all you have to do is put in your name, put in your link, and it's ready to go. We even created a PFS cocktail and mocktail 
so you can have a virtual happy hour with your friends and family. You can all drink your blue drinks and ask them to make a donation. Um, PFF trivia, we've created a whole trivia game you can do virtually. So really the possibilities are endless and we've, we have these tools for you. So getting it started is really easy. And I think it's a great way to continue to connect with your friends and family, especially during this time when we're all feeling sort of disconnected um, for this cause and to support this community in a really fun way. Um, and again, we're here to help. We have these tools and resources, but our, you know, our efforts don't stop there. So this is my contact information on the screen, and I'd love to chat if you have an idea and see how we can work together um, and get you started with your own fundraiser. And one person who knows a lot about creating their own fundraiser is Debbie Herndon, who told us a little bit about her event um, at the beginning of the webinar. But this um, is just a couple of photos from her past Breath of Palooza walks, as well as her flyer for her upcoming walk this year. Um, so Debbie, I'd love if you can just share any tips you have for someone interested in hosting their own event, starting their own fundraiser, and especially maybe this year when things are looking so different. First of all, I'd like to say the, the very first thing you should do is get in contact with the PFF because I've had enormous amounts of help from um, Jackie's department and from Amy and just in, in doing these walks because when I started the first walk, I'd never done a walk before. So it was all new to me. Um, I think that um, it is going to be a challenge this year to do virtual walks, but um, where in the past we've had people um, probably say, gee, I won't be able to attend um, because I live in Seattle. But now you can just encourage them to walk virtually in their own neighborhood when they want to, where they want to, and with whom they want to. And so I think in a way that's kind of an, um, um, a positive for the virtual walk. The other thing is, um, Probably try try to set out and, and get a corporate sponsor if you can. Um, I know the first place we went was to our oxygen supplier, and they've been very gracious for us um, in, in town here. And um, I don't know that I have any other advice at this time. As much as you can, try to get into the, the news media. Like I said, if you can, you can use social media, but... Um, I failed to mention that for our walks, we have always had an article the week before in one of our local newspapers, and that's kind of brought awareness to the walk as well as to the disease and to the, the research uh, funding needed. And we have also um, had news coverage of the walk after the walk. So, so both of those, all of those little things, you know, um, they're, Sometimes it's just an email away to get some of that stuff. So, but I can't thank the PFF more than I can with this walk because I certainly couldn't have done this without them. Well, thank you, Debbie. And those were great tips. So, as she said, you know, I think that's a really great point that you just never know and it's worth the ask. And you could be just one email away, like you said, from, from getting the support. I'd just like to say one more thing, and it's the top picture of that um, um, on there, of the family on there, is a very special family in our support group, and um, uh, the man in the middle of the two women on the left-hand side, as you look at it, has since passed away, but his grandson on the right-hand side of the, um, of the banner is a marathon runner, and he actually did a 24-hour nonstop walk for the PFF in honor of his grandfather last year. Um, and, you know, that was, that was just out of love for his grandfather. And so anything like that can also raise funds. You could raise funds in honor or in memory of, of your loved one. Another good way that I want to make mention of is... I did a birthday fundraiser for the PFF on Facebook, thinking that, you know, maybe I would get just, you know, enough to cover maybe a lunch for one of our support groups. Instead, I came very, very close to a four figures in raising for the PFF. Others in my group have done the same thing and raised money. So these are just different ideas that 
that kind of probably are more important now during um, our COVID times than ever before. Absolutely, yes, I love that. The, the possibilities are endless, you know, running, if running 24 hours is in your yeah. <laughs> skill set. That's amazing, that's so great. And you actually just made a great segue to my next slide about Facebook fundraisers. Um, so Debbie, I don't know your experience, but they're so easy, right, to set up. Just a few clicks, you can set it up. So as Sam was mentioning, Facebook is such a powerful tool for awareness, but also for fundraising. So you can go to the Pulmonary Fibrosis Foundation Facebook page, just click create a fundraiser, quickly share your story, why this is important to you, and then it, you can post it to your wall. So it goes to all of your network so quickly, so easily. And as Debbie said, it's really powerful. You can reach a lot of people. Um, and raise a lot of funds. So I love hearing that you did that. People do it, again, like Debbie said, for their birthday, but it's also great to do during Awareness Month to help continue to get that um, momentum and that buzz around pulmonary fibrosis as you work to spread awareness and to raise funds. So I encourage you, if you have a Facebook, to check it out. Um, it can be really powerful. Do you have anything to add on Facebook fundraisers, Debbie? Not on Facebook fundraisers, but I do have to get this little blip in that um, um, coming from Boise, Idaho, our um, university team is the Boise State Broncos, and we happen to be the only football field in the nation that blues up for pulmonary fibrosis. We have a blue football field in Boise, Idaho. That's just so cool. That's amazing. Um, wonderful. So again, you know, the possibilities are really endless around creating your own fundraiser, whether it's hosting a full-blown event, doing a Facebook fundraiser, or some, somewhere in between. Um, so I just wanted to touch on the next slide, just a few other ways that you can get involved with fundraising. Uh, so we have a major gift program, and these gifts help us expand our programs that we're already doing. They help us do new things. Um, so it's a great way to help us continue to do this important work. We have recurring gift programs where you can help ensure the sustainability of what we're doing and ensure the future for continued research and continued programming for this community. We, as Debbie mentioned, have tribute pages to honor and remember loved ones who have battled this disease. Um, and it's a great way to honor them and the community at the same time, as well as planned giving, which is a great way to leave a gift to the community in your state um, and to, again, ensure sustainability and a legacy for this community. So all of this information is on our website or you can contact us at this email address to learn more about these specific programs. But just wanted to share, there's, there's so many opportunities and we just thank you for your support and what you're doing to help the community drink PFAM and as Sam said, really all year long. So thank you. Great, thank you so much, Jackie and Debbie. Um, those are great ideas of ways to get involved and how to how to sort of make these things virtual when we can't normally, you know, the staff would be going down downtown Chicago to be walking and we won't be doing that this year. So those are some great ideas. Um, I wanna finish up by talking about another way you can become involved, which is through becoming a PFF advocate. So who are the PFF advocates? So these are people who advocate on behalf of the pulmonary fibrosis community, advocating for policies that will spur pulmonary fibrosis research and help improve the lives of people who are currently living with pulmonary fibrosis. One recent success that we've had is that we asked members of Congress to include in their funding reports for this year to um, include pulmonary fibrosis research in those reports. So Congress funds the National Institutes of Health, or the NIH, and the NIH is the world's largest public funder of medical research. The research that they have done has been so important for pulmonary fibrosis, things like pulmonary rehabilitation, familial pulmonary fibrosis, and some of the basic science that's led to the treatments we have today was funded by the NIH. 
So we asked Congress to include in their report for funding for the NIH that pulmonary fibrosis research is an important area for them. And we were successful in having the House of Representatives include that language in their report this year. We were so excited. We think it's the first year it's ever been in the House report. Um, the Senate has not yet put out their report, but we're hopeful that it'll also be included in that. And Debbie Herndon actually was one of the people who was supposed to go to DC with us to advocate for, for this language, but uh, we, we ended up doing it virtually. And I was wondering, Debbie, if you would just talk for a minute about your experience with um, talking with officials, talking with their offices. Is it, um, you know, how is it to talk about your experience with pulmonary fibrosis and the importance of research to these offices? I, I think it's vitally important, and, um, and not only um, I have been to DC to advocate for PFF one time, and um, not always do you get to talk to the actual congressman or senator, but you get to talk to one of their aides, and actually that's kind of to an advantage because they are specifically perhaps the health aide, and they're the one that really is interested in health issues and research and so on. I've also found that you don't really have to go to Washington, D.C. to, to advocate for PFF. I have um, had meetings um, locally with our um, Senate and Congress congressional offices here in, in the city. And again, I've talked to an aide, but again, they've grasped the concept. Some of them, it was brand new to them. Some of them might have had a relative that had passed from pulmonary fibrosis. So it kind of hit home to them. So. Um, I just think it's very important to get the word out there. Yeah, it, you know, and these offices do want to hear from you. They are, they want to know what's important to the people who are in their constituency, who are you know part of their part of their electorate. So um, it's it's really helpful and useful to reach out to them. So mm -hmm. how how can you all? How can the rest of the people on the call um, engage with with uh, this advocacy efforts. So the first step is to go to pulmonaryfibrosis.org slash advocacy and sign up for alerts. Periodically, we have different policies that we want to advocate for. And by signing up for these alerts, you'll get those. Um, you'll have those sent to you via email or via text. So there's this form on the website that you can go to and sign up. After you've done that, the same the same place at pulmonaryfibrosis.org slash advocacy, I would encourage you to go ahead and reach out to your members of Congress today. You can send them an email via the form that we have on our website. It's right there. You can and see where it is that you can email them. What we're asking for today is for emergency funding for the NIH. As I said, the NIH has been so important to pulmonary fibrosis research and they unfortunately because of COVID, there have been lab shutdowns, there's been all kinds of delays to research and they need additional funds to make sure that that research continues. So I would encourage you to go to pulmonaryfibrosis.org slash advocacy, sign up for the alerts and then actually act on, act on the one that's on there today. You just have to fill in your name, your address, you can look through the email, make sure, you know, you can personalize it if you want to, and then go ahead and send it off. It'll be so easy. It's all the information is right there. Um, great. So, so we've talked about a lot of different ways that you can be involved. We've really covered a lot of ground today. Um, and I want to go ahead and do another poll to ask you all, how are you going to commit to to being involved with Pulmonary Fibrosis Awareness Month this year. Are you going to do awareness like sharing and liking the facts on Facebook? Are you going to fundraise through a walk or through the appeal? Are you going to engage in advocacy or go to our website and send an email to your members of Congress? So I'm going to go ahead and um, start this next poll and you are able to uh, you are able to choose more than one answer. So if you are doing all three, go ahead and click all three if that's your plan or click on the one that you are most likely to do. And then I'll give everyone just a minute here to, to vote. All right. 
I'll go ahead and close the poll and let's see what we got. Let's see our results. So everyone says that they're gonna engage in awareness, I love to see that. And then about two thirds of people are gonna do fundraising and two thirds will do it advocacy. So that's fabulous. It's so great that you all are committing to um, helping to spur research, to helping to make sure that people with pulmonary fibrosis have the resources that they need. We appreciate it so much. Um, let's see, okay. Going back to our website, and again, um, you've seen a ton of information today. If you need to go back, we'll, we'll do a couple of questions in a minute, but if you need to go back and sort of process some of it, and then you have questions, or you start getting into your activities, and you're like, I really need to know how to do this, please reach out to us at the PFF Patient Communications Center, PCC at pulmonaryfibrosis.org, or 844-825-5733. We'll be able to direct you to the right person who can help with your questions. Now, let's go to the questions that we have right now. I saw that there were a couple that had come up, which is awesome. Um, great. So this is a question for Sam. Um, Sam, do you know how you find um, how you find out who owns the buildings to blue up to go blue? Is that something that you know? That's a great question. Um, I would start by seeing if that building has a website. Um, a lot of the the most, like I guess, popular or famous buildings in a community typically does have a website. So try with a Google search first with the name of the web, the name of the building, and see if you can't find a website. And there, you should be able to find the phone numbers, the emails, the management contact, and all of that information. Great. That makes that makes sense. Um, Melissa King, uh, who's one of our PFF ambassadors, says that Niagara Falls goes blue every year and she will send pictures of it. So again, make sure you send pictures. The pictures of the buildings and the different monuments going blue are so beautiful. I love seeing them. So make sure everyone sends those pictures. Um, let's see. So, so Mal Doyle had asked if we have an active bequest program um, and that's the, that's the plan giving program, correct, Jackie? Correct, yes. Yeah. So if you go to our website, there's information about that. And also, we can direct you to our my colleague who has all the details on that. But yes, we do. OK, great. Sounds good. That's someone that yeah, excellent. Sounds good. OK. Well, thank you all so much. Thank you, especially Debbie. I can't thank you enough for um, participating today. I think those were those are the questions we have for now. But please, again, email us at pcc at pulmonaryfibrosis.org. I think this is great information, and uh, I can't wait to see all the ways that people engage this year. So great, thank you all, and um, we will we will see you all later. Bye. Thank you.